Hello, so today's video is going to be on a helmet that has several different names. Um, one of the common names it's called is the Revision Helmet, another one it's called is I think the Bolt Skin Cobra Plus or Cobra 2, and also known as the Virtus Helmet or Virtus Helmet. Basically it's the modern British Army helmet, one that was replacing the Mark 7 in service. I still think there are some Mark 7s left in service at this point, but this is sort of the new good one. So. What makes this different from pretty much any of the other helmets I have is this one is not made from Kevlar or steel. It's the stuff that's now replacing Kevlar, which has a very long, complicated name, but generally a lot of companies call it thermoplastic. And the idea with thermoplastic is that it's much, much stronger than Kevlar and offers a better level of protection while being lighter. So it's one of those things I think you're going to see more and more body armour type stuff using thermoplastic soon. So. Essentially, if you look on YouTube, there's a video where a guy called Mike B, he shoots one of these helmets, well not this particular one obviously, and it's the US version, the ECH, um, Enhanced Combat Helmet. He shoots that with pistol rounds and rifle rounds up to 7.62 NATO and none of them get through. Now, you'd probably still die from some of the impacts I imagine, but the point is that, you know, unlike a Kevlar helmet, it actually stops rifle rounds, or a steel pot helmet, and, you know, it's a lot lighter than the titanium helmet. So this is what the helmet looks like obviously without the cover on and I've got the cover as well so I'll put that on in a second. What you've got at the front there is a mount for night vision. Um, I believe that's called a rhino mount but I'm not super into all the night vision stuff yet so I can't give you too much of an explanation of that. There you go, that just goes on like that. So when you add your night vision um, attached obviously you can have that on there hanging down. So I'll set this up with a pulsar at some point but not for this video. So that's that, so I won't have the mount on any longer because I'm not going to need it for the video. So that's that there. So it's got a very comfortable adjustment system. Basically, at the back, there is a thing there you twist which adjusts how tight the helmet is or loose the helmet is, which is really handy. Um, it's got obviously like the two style strap system rather than just one strap that goes under there. Good chin bit there. You can get strap extenders for this, like all the mandible guards and everything. Um, whether or not I'll bother getting a lot of those, I don't know yet. So if you want to see the helmet, I'm just going to cover up the serial number, just in case there's anything a bit dodgy with that. But that's the inside of the helmet. So it's got an MTP sort of camo mesh inside. And as you can see, when you twist that, that basically makes the helmet smaller or larger inside, which is really cool. I assume you can probably adjust some of these bits here as well, but I don't think I have any need to because it feels, you know, completely perfect for me at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is just put the cover on. So got a multi-cam cover for it, or an MTP cover, and it's designed to fit the helmet. You'll notice it's actually got little bits cut into it. Now it's going to be quite awkward for me to hold the helmet and stretch this over, so I'm just going to cut back once I've actually got the cover on. So here we go, that's the cover back on the helmet. As you can see it basically fits all around the little bits of the helmet. Most importantly there's a bit cut out there for the, um, you know, night vision mount. So that's good. So as I said, very easy helmet to adjust. The chin strap on this one luckily seems to fit me perfectly without adjusting it, which is nice because that's very rare on a helmet. Normally I'm forever trying to adjust them and all that, but you know, that's good. So I think that's a little clasp open there. How would you adjust this then? I assume it's some bit there you'd pull through. But it doesn't matter too much because as I said it fits me, so I don't want to mess up the straps. Now I've got one that actually fits me alright. And then just, yep, yeah, twist a bit at the back to get that snugly on your head but not too tight. See if you keep twisting it, you're sort of crushing your head in a bit. Uh, if you have it really loose, obviously, the helmet's going to wobble around a lot. So you'd tighten that, I guess, to it's a snug fit, but not uncomfortable. Um, but that's quite nice, because I think more helmets should really have a system like that. If you're going to do a techie helmet, kind of, you know, do a good system. Don't do the thing of... Because, you know, the way I look at it with helmet liners and all that, you can have something very, very simple, which is fine. You know, like a bit of leather that's held in there with, a, you know, like a band around it, a bit of string and a simple chin strap, or you can go for something like this. It's very annoying when there's helmets at the sort of middle of the road where they've got lots of complex little bits and parts on the liner, but it's no more comfortable than, you know, a standard leather style one. So there's that. So I want to do two things in this video. I want to test it with two gas masks in particular, or two respirators. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be shooting this helmet or anything like that, because this will be my prized helmet now, because um, these do cost quite a lot. To give you some idea of what these cost on eBay, if you get quite beaten up ones, sometimes they're about £200. If you get one like this that's in good grade A used condition, they're about 250 That's what I paid for this one, I think it was. So, yeah. So, expensive as far as helmets go, but that's because they're obviously current issue kind of um, 
very good military grade stuff. It's not, you know, like a 30 year old helmet or whatever. So there's that. So what we're going to do now is test it with two respirators. The GSR, because that's the respirator Britain currently uses, uh, as in the Scott GSR. And then what we're going to do is test it with the Avon M50, because that's probably the mask Britain might go with. And that's also the mask the US uses. So because this is a fairly similar helmet to the one the US uses, not identical, but the same sort of filler in it, uh, like armouring, what we're going to do is test it with both of those masks. So, let's get the GSR out first. All right, pop the helmet off. I'll just loosen that bit, because I assume I'll need that looser for uh, this to fit properly. So there's a little buckle there. But yeah, everything feels high quality and nice in this helmet. Uh, lots of padded bits as well, you know, there's nothing in here where I think all oh, that's cheap and nasty, looks like it's going to break. So that's a good sign, obviously you don't want a helmet where that's okay, so let's get this on. Okay, so that's the Scott GSR on. As you all know, not my favourite respirator, but very relevant for the video. I've not got the extenders for this, as said, so I can't do the strap up with it on, but yeah, you can do that up fairly well. It doesn't block the field view, so yeah, it fits properly with the GSR, so that's good. So, you know, that's a very good start. One mask tested, one mask works. So, now let's try the Avon M50, and hopefully that will work even better. But yeah, like pretty much all helmets, if you're using them with a gas mask, you need an extended strap because the mask is obviously adding a lot more bulk to your chin and sort of cheeks, so a regular strap won't fit around it. So, here we go. Now, the interesting thing of the M50 is it's got the top section of it that's designed to be really sort of flat, so it should fit with most helmets fine. Um, so I assume with this helmet it'll be even easier. So let me just undo the bottom straps, which don't want to move for some reason at the moment. There we go. And then let me pop this on. Around my face, properly now. Very good. Right. So, Avon M50 now. Grab the helmet back again. And let's test this. So. Ah, oh yeah, lovely. So, yeah, as I said, this isn't obviously going to do up because it's going to be too short the thing, but. Yep, that sits absolutely fine on there. Don't know if it looks a bit wonky on the camera, but it's definitely on my head fine anyway. Um, you know, it's protecting you as much as you're going to be protected having a helmet over a mask. Obviously, if you fully loosened it, you might be able to get it a bit lower in places, but, you know, overall, it's good. So, there we go. So, yeah, that will probably be the thumbnail for this video because, you know, it looks cool having it on with the M50. So, yeah, so far, we've realised that it works quite well with the M50 and GSR, but obviously you'd need a strap extender. Uh, to get that, like a chin strap extender, to get that to fit right. So there's one more test I want to do with it. Um, that should be quite interesting. Now, I don't know how well it's going to work, um, but it will just be an interesting test regardless. I'm going to put some gamma radiation through it, and we'll see how much of the gamma radiation it stops. Um, just because, why not? Um, so yeah, this is going to be gamma radiation coming from a bit of radium paint um, inside a tin. So what we'll do is we'll take some measurements with the therapy decimeter, and then we'll see how much lower it is with it inside the helmet. Right, so here's the tin, and this bit where the label is, that's where I've put the radium, and I've got stuff wedged in there so it doesn't move. So if we put the decimeter directly above it, let's see what reading we get. That's going to be upside down for the camera, I'm afraid, but I tell you what, I can just put it like that, can't I? So, that is currently getting a reading of... Which side's the Geiger tube on there? Just have it centralised. 100 microsieverts, 100.4 microsieverts, 101. So we're looking at about 101. Now what we'll do is if we put this up a bit, we'll see what the, you know, uh, gamma ratings are at various distances, just to get a ballpark figure. So that's at 71 at the moment. 64. 58. 37. It's obviously dropping a lot due to the inverse square law of how radiation works. 33, I think it's stabilised about 33, yeah 34 because it's going back up. Right, let's put it up a bit higher, you should get a much lower reading now, but let's see what that goes to. 2, 1, <laughs> 2, 1, yep, so, sorry it's probably a bit out of frame, but yeah the point is that we kind of just, to get a ballpark figure of what we're going to get anyway due to inverse square law. So what I'm going to do is, because it's be the easiest way of demonstrating it on video, I'm just going to literally put this here, 
and then hopefully you should be able to see what figure comes up. So at the moment 26.67, 25, 25, 24, and this is a micro sieverts by the way. So in milli rontgens this would probably be like 2.4 milli rontgen rather than 25 micro sieverts. Yep, right, so what I'm going to do now is hold that about that height um, and just see what it would have been. As I said, this isn't an exact science by any means, but 27, 30, 33, 40. Let's just hold it a bit higher just to give the helmet the benefit of the doubt. 38, 37, 36, 35. 34, it will stop counting in a minute when it stabilises, 33, 33, yep, so it looks like about 33, so the helmet definitely helps, um, another way I can just quickly test it is let's just put this laying flush there, we'll put the helmet over it, and then we'll see what measures on top, just like that, 8, 14, 13. Yeah, so it should give you a good idea that actually, weirdly enough, this, even though I don't know how dense the material would be with, because it's not very heavy, but it does seem to cut down the gamma quite a bit. You know, um, obviously lead is very good for cutting down gamma, but as I've shown before in videos, lead isn't as good as some people think for stopping radiation. But yeah, so the good news is, if you had one of these helmets on, it would actually cut the amount of gamma radiation it gets through quite significantly. Um, which was better than I was expecting, to be honest. Because, you know, as I said, that's not what the helmet is designed to do at all. Um, if we, I'm just trying to find if there's a really thin area of the helmet I could test this against, but I don't know how practical it would be. I was just wondering if I could put that inside, for example, there, get that as close as possible, and just do that here to see uh, what reading we get. 47. 48. 49. 50. 49. Right, so about 49 through the side there. So what I just want to try now is moving this out slightly and then see how much the numbers jump up. 49, 45, 45. I need to put that down slightly, don't I? Otherwise that's not in line with the thing. 44. Is that 51 now? 56, is that? Because I'm looking upside down, obviously 61. 63. So yeah, the... Sorry, this is probably all going out of frame. But the point is that this actually does cut down the dose quite significantly. Um, if I just put the ticking on so you can hear audibly what it sounds like, that might give you a better idea. So what we'll do is pop this like that. So if I just do this at various ranges, and then just do this bit again, If I go all around the outside of the helmet, I'm getting about 12, 12.6, 11.94, that's a hotter spot there, 13, 14, 15, I suppose it's just because it was closer to there, but if I went around similar distances there, um, I'm sure it would actually get quite a bit higher, yeah, 21 already. So yeah, that gives you some idea that, you know, the helmet, as I said, it's not designed to stop gamma radiation by any means, but, you know, it, it certainly cuts down on it. And I guess that's just because it's so many little layers of the, you know, plastic material in here that it does that. So there you go. You know, there's not much else to say about this helmet. It seems bloody good for what it is. Obviously, I will not be shooting mine, and we'll put the audio alarm off on this now, because otherwise that's going to annoy me. There we go. Um, but yeah, so all in all, seems to be a really good helmet. And, you know, um... I'm looking forward to modifying it, you know, not obviously drilling into it and doing anything horrible like that, but, you know, putting different attachments on and doing videos, testing it with different respirators and all that sort of stuff, but yeah. Seems like this helmet seems to be bloody good for what it is, so, um, yeah, I'll definitely look forward to doing more videos with it, and, um, yeah, if you've got the budget for spending quite a lot on a helmet, it looks like these might be a bloody good option, but... As I said, it's one of those things where I imagine as the years go on, they, these will get cheaper and cheaper on eBay, as all surplus does. And hopefully it will soon be at the point where in a few different countries you might be able to get these kind of better than Kevlar helmets for, um, you know, maybe 100 or 200 pounds each. Um, but yeah, there we go. So, 
the Mark 8 helmet, the Virtus, the Cobra Revision 2, the Bolt skin, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, very, very good helmet, it seems, and um, yeah, I'd recommend it from what I've seen of these so far.